here we go. Uh, my hope today is I do a lot less talking and you guys tell me how to do some of these problems I've selected. Right, because either they can be done on the calculator or we've gone over this type of problem already. Friday is your 10 question multiple choice. All right, it will be on formative, so make sure those Chromebooks are charged for me on the Friday, please. That'd be great. Uh, all right, so let's do this. I gave you a number 36 last night from to finish out the June 2023, and then we started on January 2023. So we're gonna bounce back between two exams here. Hopefully not too long, but here we go. Anything on the five I gave you yesterday? The 36 one. All right, here we go, everybody. Can you please have out your uh, formula sheets that you need, the formulas that you need to know, please? Have that out for me today. Because not only am I going to use it this problem, I'll also use it uh, in the ones I've selected for today. All right, so 36, we have two different, we're asked to write two different equations, one for the flamingos and one for the palm trees. So let me start with the palm tree equation, which they ask you to do P of X. All right, to represent the number of palm trees. So let's start out with how do I do P of X? Uh, all right, 500 palm trees. Here we go, 500 palm trees, and they are decreasing, decreasing at an annual rate of 3%. All right, you can use that formula I've given you where it's compounded any other way, all right, because it says it's an annual rate, which is how many times a year? One, so you could use that. But you just have to be careful if you do use that. Uh, so I start out with 500. That's my principle or what I start out with. And it's 1, right? I'm looking at that formula now on your formula sheet, compounded any other way. 1. Now notice it says plus. You just got to be a little disciplined. We're not increasing here, are we? We're decreasing. So you want to put 1 minus. Go right ahead. All right, it's got to be 1 minus, though. I can't use the plus because it's decreasing. And then how do I turn 3% into a decimal for my rate? 0.03. Now, look, you can do this, 0.03 divided by 1 raised to the raised to the 1, but the 1 doesn't matter there. Anytime it's annual, you can leave that, that stuff out. It's quarterly divided by 4, monthly divided by 12 that you want to actually put it in. So here, you're safe by just doing 1 minus 0.03 because it's annual. Does everyone see that? There's no reason to divide because it's going to be 1. All right, annually. And then I raise that to X years from now. So raise it to the X. So everybody good with palm trees. All right, flamingos. You read through the flamingos. Here's what I see. Continuous. Continuous. That's a pert for me. Okay, that's a pert. Okay, anytime I see something's happening continuously, it's going to be a pert. So now that's going to be f of x for the flamingos, p for my initial amount, which is what, 200 of those bad boys? e, there's no 1 minus 1 plus here, it's a per e, e to the rate, which is what for our rate here? How do I put 2% as a rate? Point zero, raised to the point zero 0.02, and I don't have a t here for time, I have x instead. So those are the two equations. One compounded any other way, one compounded continuously. Now, part B, when are they equal? Okay, when are they equal? And there's good news here, real good news. You guys don't probably see it, but it doesn't say do it algebraically, which means I don't need to see any work. All right, we don't need to see work how you solved it. So where are you going to go to solve it? Write to equations on the calculator, yep. Because it does not say, it does not say solve it algebraically. So we can go right to the calculator, see when these bad boys are equal to each other. And just make sure we round it to the nearest year. So again, I hopefully you guys are comfortable doing that. And hopefully you're getting about 18 when you round it to the nearest year, 18. And just be careful. Make sure you read everything, everything, everything. You have to stay for two hours. You have three hours to take it, but you got to stay for two. 
All right, so if you finish this thing in an hour, you got to stay put in that seat for uh, another hour. All right, so read through everything. You're not, let's be honest, you're not going anywhere afterwards. Ain't you? That's that important. All right, so stay as long as you need to. Uh, interpret the meaning of this value. All right, so what's this mean, 18, as far as the problem goes? What's that telling us? 18, what was X? So 18 years, flamingos and palm trees will be the same amount or something. It doesn't have to match that, but 18 years, they're both going to be equal to each other. My grammar is awful, but... Whatever gets the point across that 18 years from now, we'll both have the same amount of flamingos as palm trees. And write as much as you need to. All right, all good there on that one? All right, so putting this to rest. Remember, we always, just because we put an exam to rest, there's still more that we didn't do. All right, so keep that in mind when you go study on your own, whenever that'll be. All right, anything on the couple multiple choice I have given you? Because my fear, one second, Max, yep. I'm starting to fear that you guys don't know how much you can use that calculator and when to use it. All right, you got, I know, and I respect it that you guys try to solve stuff straight up, but sometimes you can use that calculator. Always think if I can use the calculator or not. Go ahead, Max, what do you want me to look at? Number four. Yep, and this is, a, this is one where we could use the calculator. All right, exponential decay, meaning it's gonna go downhill, right? If I take a look at an exponential decay graph, it's gonna look, that's awful, God, oh my God. How do I, they let me teach. All right, there's something that would be exponential decay. All right, so all I would do right now is type each one of these in grapher, look at the graph, and three of them are gonna be increasing, and the last one's gonna be decreasing. Okay, that's my easiest way to, tell you about that. Just plug them all into the calculator and see which one's decreasing. Anything else we want to look at on those? Multi I tried to assign, I think all the multiple choices I assigned to you literally could have been done in your calculators. All of them could have been done somehow in your, just using your calculator and no other knowledge. Anything else we want to take a look at before I start talking to you guys about today's problems? All right, I'm gonna to try to take a hands-off approach as much as possible. I don't wanna say you teach me, but you tell me how you would tackle the problem. We're gonna start with number eight now. Let's start with number eight. So six minus ki all squared is equal to 27 minus 36i. What the heck's the value of k? I have a feeling, I think, I know what some of you are going to try to do, but I want you to not do that. Thoughts here? What if you plugged in, try a guessing, a little guessing check? The answer is there. It's one of those four, isn't it? So take each four and plug it in. Okay, you can't, you can't do six minus ki, okay? You can't do a variable in i in the same, in your screen, in your calculations. But you can do, you can plug in for k. What's up, Richie? That's kind of what I'm Yeah, not, not your own number though. Don't plug in your own number. It's gotta be one of those four. Everyone see that? It's gotta be one of those four for k, all right? And your, and your calculator, you're gonna see, will tell you which one's 27 minus 36i. All right, so if you want to, it's up to you. You can plug it in just naturally, just do six minus and then type in the number, or you can use the store key. And you guys can say, hey, I'm going to take, let's see, what's my first one? Negative 36. I'm going to take negative 36 and store it in for K. Shift, nope, alpha K. And then type in six minus KI squared. We all know where the K, where the I button is. We're all good there. Where's K? There it is. I. Bless you. Squared. 
Now it's giving me undefined, huh? Why is it giving me undefined? Could it be, oh wait, did you skip that? I got 27 minus 36 with number three. No, no, the answer is number uh, three, but I'm just wondering why I got a undefined when I stored in. Wonder if I do if I six minus negative thirty six i all squared. Okay, I guess I had to type in type it in instead of trying to store it in for k. All right. Everyone, yes, Grant. Um, I just typed it into equations and got the same thing. Is that gonna always work or? You typed it into equation. What do you mean? Talk yeah. to me more. I don't know what you mean. I went to the equation. Okay. And, and what did you type in? I just typed in that exact problem, and then it gave me three. It did? Yeah. Okay. For me too. All right. There you go. You guys, you, you guys are teaching me, too. Yeah. yeah. That's good. All right. Good deal. I like it. I never even thought of that. I just stored in all the answers. All right. Good. Anybody else? Questions? This is why I like you guys a lot. You're not, you're also, you're not malicious about it when you tell me. Jesus, just go to the equations. You can do it. You gotta be nice about it. How about 12? Thoughts on 12? Okay, so you're actually doing the problem and using your rules. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're going to do. I am. I'm going to do it both ways here, because if this was a part two, you got to know how to do it. How else could I? It's multiple choice. Which this can be rewritten as. What could you do? This is my fear now. You guys don't store a number in for x, right? Can I store a number in? Figure out what this value is equal to, and then type in each of these. Right? I, this is a store problem. All right? I can store in any number I want other than, you know, the negative 0 and 1. So store in any number you want for x. Figure out what it's going to be equal to, and then go here. Is everyone uh, – I picked this one on purpose. How to get do something like the 10th root of x to the third. Go to your toolbox. It's all there for you. Okay, so I would store here, definite store, but you guys go ahead and store if you want. I do want to go over what happens if this is a part two and I actually have to write an answer. What's up? Uh, I did not get two. It would be three, yes. Yep, and that's what I want to go over. Everyone all right storing? You get three as your choice. All right, you ready? Straight up, doing this straight up. What happens if this happens on a part two question, right? And I actually have to come up with this as my final answer. All right, here you go, Paige. Start us off. You talk. What happens when I divide? I got to do what with my exponents? Subtract them, right? So I do one fifth minus one half, and I'll do that quickly for you guys. That's three negative three tenths. All right, that's what I get, negative three tenths. Now here's the thing you have to remember. Uh, I, maybe you remember from last year or not. If an exponent is negative, how do I make it positive? I send it to the denominator, right? I send it to the denominator. So I would rewrite this as one over x to the th positive three tenths. All right, so if you want to make that exponent negative, send it to the denominator. Now, here's something we've talked about. How do I change an exponent into a radical, a radical into an exponent? E over? No, Nelly, nobody? E over I, exponent over index. So when I go to write this, I do have my square root with the X, but I got to put the three and the 10 somewhere. Exponent? over index, E over I, exponent over index. That's where the 10 goes, All right? Exponent over index. That's how I rewrite it both ways.
All right. Anything here? Move. Oh boy, that looks intimidating. 13. Read it through. Talk to me. Talk to me how we're going to find K. Oh, all right. That's a good, there's a good, there's a good start. Paige, one more time for your classmates. What's K? We, we didn't call it, we never called it K. What did we call it? That's our B value, isn't it? All right, that's our B value they're asking for, but they put a K there instead. So they are asking for the B value. So now hopefully the mind starts turning a little bit. How did we always find the B value? P equals two pi over B. Good, if you wanna put a K there to make you feel warm inside, go ahead, instead of a B. So the only thing we need for this problem is what the heck's the P, which stood for what? Period. How long it takes to make a full curve before it starts repeating again. All right, so you look there, start at the beginning, start tracing it if you need to with your pen or finger and see where it starts repeating again. Because it, it's not five. A lot shorter than five. Ready? Here you go. Not repeating yet. Tell me when it start when the graph is done. Right there, right? And then I start going up and down. So what's the period? One. Harper. The other number that's on the x axis. It's like, and it's divided into four values. Your key values? You take your period and yeah, divide it by yeah, four. What's the final one called? The period. The fourth tick mark is called the period. Yeah. The fourth one's called the. the oh, yeah. We are finding B is called the frequency. Yeah. That's called the frequency. The period is the last tick mark, yes. Okay. All right, before I divide it up into four. So one equals two pi over K. Yeah, we're finding the frequency in this problem. That's the B, that's what the B value is called. And then you guys cross multiply here for me. And, and yep, K is equal to two pi. Not bad, huh? A little confidence in that one. Hey, that's one our calculator does nothing for us. Now, uh, I guess maybe, I guess maybe you could get away with using the calculator. Anybody know how? Graph it with all these choices plugged in. And I guess which, make sure it goes out to five and see which one matches it. You know, maybe, all right, if you need to. Anything else, 13? We're going quick today. You're gonna to have plenty of time to practice and I'll come help you out. All right, 16. So I have this I have this graph, which values of x will have it. So f of x is always greater than zero. Uh, if you don't like f of x, what can you replace it with? A y. So I'm at, I'm looking for where on this graph are your y values greater than zero? Okay. Where on this graph are your y values always greater than zero? Uh, suggestion: What should we all pull up here? Let's see what this bad boy looks like together, right? I went over this with Gabby yesterday, but I want to make sure everybody knows if for some reason you don't see anything or something you know looks wrong, make sure you always have auto highlighted up there. All right. That will automatically put the graph into your screen so you can see it. All right. So if anything looks funky, because remember, you can't go, I can't see the graph. What am I going to do? Good luck, young buck. Good luck. Good luck to you. All right. All right. So let's answer this question. Where are my Y values greater than zero? Anything less than negative two, right? Because that's above. So anything less than negative two. Anything in between here? Everyone agrees my Y values are all negative here. All negative, all negative until I get where? 
Anything greater than? Is that a three? Okay, anything greater than three. Looks like an eight to me, so sorry, I'm getting old. All right, so anything less than two or greater than three would work. All right, anything in between is not going to cut it because as you can see, all the Y values here are negative. So which one am I looking at? Two? Nope. Yeah, two. It's not bad. Calculator's doing all the work. This exam I was looking through here, a lot of calculator stuff could have been done here. By the way, this is the exam the kids took last year. So I don't know if it's on the same difficulty level or not, but the same ones my guys took last year. 19. 19. This is, do you know the formula or not? Okay. A lot to read, but, and I hope you don't get tricked. Well, you can't get tricked based on the uh, choices. So. <clears throat> What's it asking for? What's the margin of error? So do we know the formula or not to find it? Because you're not getting, providing that little dot plot is useless, all right, other than I'm going to need something from that top right-hand corner of numbers. Anybody remember how to find the margin of error? Not my confidence interval. Not the CI. The MO, right, Grant? The yep. MO. Plus or minus 2 times standard deviation. There you go. Yep. Doesn't look like they put the plus or minus slackers in the uh, answers, though. Plus or minus 2 times the standard deviation. There it is. Know the formula. Can't help you that calculator can't help you there. All right, just gotta know that formula. Two more, then I'm done. Uh, how about 21? Please, the reason why I want to do this one with you is right away you eliminate two of those choices because you know what a recursive formula should look like and what it involves. All right? If it's supposed to be recursive, there's only two options it could be. The other two are not recursive formulas. Which two are you getting rid of? Three and four are not recursive, correct. Remember, recursive, you need the first term, and what do you do to the previous term? Okay. All right, so now we're down to this here. And the only difference is what sides, what's in the parentheses, 0. 0.2 versus 0. 0.8. And I know all of you are going to be like 20%. Let's just pick 0. 0.2. And it's going to be incorrect. Okay, it's going to be incorrect. All right, this is similar to what we just did on the first problem you guys asked me about with the palm trees and the flamingos. 20% uh, of the trees are cut down, so I'm decreasing, right? Decreasing. So what would be in here? 1 plus or 1 minus? Minus, minus the percent, 0.2. So really what's in the parentheses? 0.8, okay, because I was decreasing 20% and you're putting in kind of what's left over here. And look, if, if that, I, know, I know that's tough to understand, write out a couple of terms. All right, I start out with 150. I lose 20%, so how many trees do I have left here? How many trees do I have left next? And you're going to see you wouldn't multiply by 0.2, you're multiplying by 0.8 instead. And finally, 22, 22. Third time we've done these type of problems, third time. But here's the difference. We're going to answer the question like we normally have, but then I want to actually go over how the heck do I write an equation for a parabola if they ask me this on part two or three. 
All right, focus is four, negative three. Use that scrap graph paper they're gonna provide at the back of your test. So here you go, four, negative three. Directrix is y equals one, and that's a line, remember? Boom. All right, so how do you find the vertex again? Because this is the focus. Where's the vertex going to be again? In the middle, right, of the focus and directrix. So how far apart are these bad boys right now? How many units, if you counted, from negative 3 to 1? Four units. So the vertex is going to be two units away from either one, right? Halfway, two units from either one. So if I go two units away, it's going to be at, what's the point here? Yep. So what is the vertex? Four, negative one. And now I go to my calculator, graph all four. Only one's going to have a vertex at four, negative one. And also, too, how should it, just to save yourself even more time, how should this open, up or down? Up or down this parabola? Down, it never crosses the directrix, never crosses the directrix. So when you type something in right now, you type a choice in and it opens up. See ya, not even, not, even, not a shot. It's got to open down. So go ahead, find the correct answer. And then the final thing I want to do with you is how do you actually write this equation if I was asked to do so on a part two? Because I wouldn't be shocked if that came up. So make sure it opens down and has a vertex of four, negative one. Go back to what are you graphing? Mm -hmm. You're on the wrong problem. We're doing this one. 22. Oh, Come on now. Later. Come on now. You're better than that. <laughs> Choice four. Choice four. All right, real quick before I let you go on your own. Give you plenty of time today. All right, say this is a part two question. And they asked me to write the equation that of a parabola with a focus of four negative three and y equals negative one. How do I do that? All right, here we go. Go back to that formula sheet, please. And you know, formulas you need to know. First time we're uh, using this formula, but you've got to know how to write the equation of a parabola. Everyone find it, find it. It's there somewhere, equation of a parabola. And I don't care if this is different how you did it last year, if you remember or not. This is the easiest way for me to show you with limited amount of time. So everyone sees what it is. Y equals 1 fourth P times X minus H all squared plus K. And I'll go over what each variable means here in a second. Okay, so there's my equation. P is the distance from the vertex to the focus or vertex to directrix, doesn't matter. I got that right, right there. Distance from the focus to the direct, focus to vertex or vertex to directrix. It doesn't matter because they're both the same. So what's my distance here? Two. Two, right? So here you go. It's going to be y equals one fourth times two. I'll take care of that in a second. And then the last values got to plug in are for h and k. And according to the, your formula sheet, what's h and k? Coordinates of the vertex. So you still need to know how to find the vertex, that it's halfway between these two bad boys. All right, so we found our vertex was four, negative one. So ready? X minus four, H and K, right? Squared minus one, the K value. All right, all I would ask you to do is clean up the one fourth times two. And then you have your equation. 
H and K are the coordinates of the vertex. P is the distance from the vertex and the focus. So Y equals, what's that, 1 half? Okay, so 1 half, X minus 4 squared minus 1. That doesn't look like the choice we picked. All right, it's in a different form. It's the same exact parabola. All right, it's just written differently. All right, because I'm not going to be shocked if they ask that in two weeks. Write the equation of this parabola. So here, that's the formula we need. All right, I don't care. You want to work with somebody else, that's fine. I'm going to be coming around, though, helping you if you need it. 9 through 11, 15, 17, 20. You guys know if you're in, hurry up, because I want you to practice, too. All right, you guys know where to find the answers to you, so make sure you have Aspen open to this exam.